So, Marhaba Shabab, welcome to part 4 of this tutorial series. And now we are starting development. Yippee! Yalla! Okay. As you can see, I have opened the Swagger documentation. Uh, if you named your um, web service on render as well as API for Android, it's just API for Android dot on render dot com and then this path here. Otherwise, you just have to switch out the name you have given. Ah, uh, yeah, this is the path to the um, Swagger documentation. And suppose, I mean, I show you how um, mobile development or front-end development is done. Normally, you have a, if you're using REST, um, you have a Swagger UI for your REST endpoints. If you use GraphQL, then it's something else. But yeah, now we are using a RESTful API. So. We see we, the first thing we want to have is a, a get request to get all the tasks. And for that, we can have a look what happens for this endpoint. You see the path for this endpoint. You see the query param parameter status. Like I have shown, let me just show it to you status open or closed. And yeah, this is the endpoint result. It will be an array. And inside of this array, there are objects. And here you can see the objects, the schemas, task fetch response. I mean, the, the names are pretty self-explaining, I would say. This is a task fetch response. Here's a task update request. Here's a task create request for post. And this one is for patch. Ah, this one is for patch, sorry. And uh, now we want to start as well to, um, you know, you take a look at the, the response classes and so on and so forth, what's happening here. And then you start to create your model layer in your app. So let's start. Let's go back to Android Studio. Here, you see I'm in my IDE. I create a new package. Let's call it model. By the way, we have also part four here. Uh, now we will also, I would stick to this naming here, task fetch response, new Kotlin data class because we are just holding data and that's it. Okay. And the next thing is actually you could all uh, just see, I mean, you could just copy everything. Just show you how I, I mean, now maybe copying is not the smartest idea. Uh, but yeah, for instance, we have an ID. Um, sorry, the val keyword is missing. Is an long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an integer 64. I mean, I would give it a long. You can give it all this integer. Then you have a description. I mean, you see it here. Description is a string. Well, you just can copy the names. Description. Make it a string. Okay. Now we come to the next thing, next property, and now it gets interesting. Booyah. It's reminder set. And I will make it nullable. And why? Normally, I just give you a best practice. Normally, as a client-side developer, a front-end developer, um, you would your data classes and so on. You would make them nullable, the fields here, because when the when the backend team decides that a field or something like this is not necessary anymore, and they delete the field and it's not nullable here, like for instance, ID then your app will crash and you will just spend a lot of time um, uh, debugging and so on while, while it's happening uh, until you realize, okay, the field, the backend team, for instance, the backend developer decide to cancel the field. And sometimes it happens the backend dev guys, they forget to tell the front end guys about stuff like this. And normally that's why it's a back practice, best practice to make all these fields nullable. Except, I mean, now, I mean, you can, if you, this, if you want, you can 
make everything nullable, but ID and description is very, very necessary for, for showing a task. We're talking about the task. And the chance that uh, the, the backend team will, will um, make, get rid of these fields, maybe because of a change, is pretty low. All the other fields, to be honest, is reminder set, is task open, created on, priority. These fields, to be honest, they can be canceled. But just, I mean, uh, that you know what's going on in the industry. And if you're working in a company, um, yeah, I experienced, it, ex I experienced it myself that sometimes the backend team decides to, to, to cancel some fields and forget to tell the Franklin guys about that. And that's why it's a best practice to make fields nullable. And I want to give you just best practices, but since ID and description are very, very necessary to show a, a, a task, I will not make them nullable. The rest of them I will make nullable so that you know. And I hope I didn't confuse you right now, but this is how, this is how <laughs> development life cycle is. A lot of changes that not getting properly communicated, unfortunately, but yeah, you, learn to deal with it create it on this will be a string we will later um adapt the string i forget okay this one here and the priority this will be um this will be funny because the priority will be an enum type Okay, priority, just make a new class in here, class priority, this is an enum class, yes, and this will just hold uh, three values inside of it, it will be low, is the priority low, is it medium, or is the priority high, and I hope I don't have any typos in here, so... What the heck? So, and we'll make this also nullable. Okay. That's, now we have, now we have modeled one class for showing, um, um, then to show a list of tasks. But I want to add one more enum field because we, as you can see the query param parameter status is either open or closed. There are only two options. And this should be also done with an enum class. So let's create a new class. Let's call it task status. Here, we, here it is. And this is, I think I just can copy it like this. And it goes like this and that's fine. So, okay, uh, that looks good for now. And yeah, I would suggest that we also add the other uh, model classes right now, like, like task request. And let's do this, I would say, task request. Uh, copy model. This is also a data class, of course. And let me just see, it has, I mean, if you're creating um, a new task, uh, what, I mean, you what you can do, you can give it a description, you can set if there's a reminder needed or not, and if the task is open or not, and the priority. But you can you can give it an ID. The ID should be done by the backend, by the database. So what we can do here now is uh, da, 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 uh, where it is here. Just take all of this and copy it, except for the ID. And here the thing is, uh, when I create a task, I don't I don't want to give null values for is task open or is it. Uh, is task open or is reminder set or priority. Um, I don't want to give you null values. I want to give some specific values. And yeah, but create on, we will do it in another way. 
we also let's remove the field created on. Um, this this create on will be also done by the backend. Sorry, so that's why we deleted ID and create on will be done by the backend by the database. And other fields we have control over it, and I don't want to give null values for none of them. Um, description is needed to create a task because what is a task without a description? <laughs> and all the other fields I want to also set from the app, so that's why there are no nullable values in here. Okay, and as you can see, so that looks good. We have here field four fields, and we have also here four fields, and these are the same ones. That's great. Let's move on to the next one. So let's take a look at patch for updating a task. And patch is pretty special because, because of this um, uh, HTTP method, we can decide to partially update them. We can just decide to update the description. Maybe we just want to update the priority or is it open or not? And that's it. And we can just decide to update, for instance, two fields, is task open and priority, or we can just decide also as well to update all of them, but yeah. Um, so we have full control what you want to update. Okay, that's great. Let's take a look what we need here. It's pretty much the same from the fields, um, like to like to create a task. So let's do this. Let's do this. So let's take this one. Update request. Data class. Yes. And now we just can also copy all the fields here. All the fields we can copy. And now here comes the catch. All the fields here will be uh, nullable. I will explain in a second. Just let me put the cursors everywhere. With, if you're using Mac, MacBook, it's option uh, shift, option shift, and place a cursor and then question mark. Okay, that's great. Because, as I said, maybe we just want to update one field or three fields or I don't know how many fields. So that's why the other fields we, we don't want to update. These will be nullable. Okay, that's great, that's great. And I would say we are uh, done with the model package. We modeled all the data classes and enums we need for, for interacting with the RESTful API. Uh, we can do now everything from, from a model perspective. Delete, we just, for delete, for instance, we just send an ID in the, um, in the um, URL and that's it. Uh, and yeah. Okay, I would say um, we are done with the model package. And in the next video, we will focus on the core package. The core package is a package which will be used in other packages as well. That's why I'm calling them it uh, core. And yeah, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you in the next video. Ilalikaya Shabab.